Yo, what's poppin' guys? You got your boy Nandra here. Welcome to another video. So for this video, this is gonna be my, uh, my Omens of the Ten card review video. Now, I would've preferred to have done this on the official site, but for some reason the official site, like, it hasn't even, like, finished, like, loading all the card jets and, like, very, like, punk ass about this. So I'm, uh, so I'm stuck doing this from Reddit. So it's, it's, it's gonna be a little bit less splashy than some of my other ones, but hey, you know, uh, take what you can get, right? So, popping into this, uh, this is the tenth, this is the tenth Shadowverse set, so obviously it's gonna be, like, pretty hype overall in terms of, like, cards coming out, you know, like, what, like, what cards do. Um, the, the so, right, so, the, so, like, two different, like, sub-mechanics for, for this, this set. Um, one is Invocation. Invocation is essentially, oh, when you, when you fulfill a side quest of some sort, you know, um, usually listed on the card itself, you then go ahead and get to choose the card from, from your deck and just put it into play. Um, you don't, you don't have to pay casting costs or anything. That's just, just, just from, from the deck, right on into play. So, as, so that's already very strong. Um, then, then you also have the omens. The omens are the, there, there are ten omens. They each do different things. Um, they each have like a subset of like of like, of, like followers and disciples and you know, things like that. that are very 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 cool. Let's gonna hop right into it. If you've uh, if you've ever been if you haven't been to like one of my card review videos before, then you should know that I go ahead and I do it. I go ahead and do it three classes at a time, and I just do it in like the chronological order or whatever. So we'll, get, we'll be starting with forest, and for forest we have Azudia Omen of Killing. Azudia Omen of Killing is a 3 mana, 6-6, six, six. the fanfare changes the enemy leaders, the maximum defense is 6. So when I first read this, sorry, when I first like saw this dude in the trailer, I was like, oh my god, this, this dude's about to be hype. Like, you know, like, uh, he's shooting 6 arrows at the same time, you know, like, he, like he's about to be some, like, I don't know, like, uh, um, Quincy type stuff, whatever, if you've ever, like, watched the red page. But then I actually saw the card, and I was like, oh, I'm significantly less, I'm, I'm very disappointed now. Um, so, here's why this card is so disappointing to me, and disappointing to many other people, is because, like, when you think about Slow Force, which is, you know, Control Force and things like that, they have a lot of really, really good win cons, and the majority of their, uh, the majority of their win cons usually don't need a card like this to make it any better, like, they're already usually pretty good, but usually pretty good on their own, like, for example, you have, like, Loki King Elephant, which does, like, anywhere from, like, 15 to, like, 20, to, like, 20 some damage, you have, um, you also have Silver Bolt, you also have, um, White Wolf, you have, uh, what else? Burst Shot, yeah, yes, even Burst Shot actually outpaces this guy, it was so silly. Um, so on and so forth. So yeah, so there's like not enough space for, for this guy to actually see play, like, like consistently see play. Um, he might be nice as a one of, and there were, and there are like certain synergies you have with this guy, including like say, you know, with like things like say Albear for like a, for like a two turn lethal, where you like play the Albear on nine, and then of course your opponent has to deal with Albear because he has stealth, and you can play the Zuni and the guy. But those aren't really consistent, and it means they have to play a bad card to make this card good. And you know, generally speaking, when that happens, it means, it means their card is just like probably just bad. Next card, Tia Crystallian Noble. So Tia, it, it all right. So Pepper, put a Crystallian Eve into your hand and change its cost to three if at least two of the cards you play this turn. Change its cost to one instead if at least four other cards you play this turn. So Crystallian Eve. If, sorry, Crystallia Eve, if you don't actually know what it is, it's the four, it's the four mana, four, four, legendary token thing they get from, um, they get from, from, the, from the original Tia art, uh, sorry, they get from the original Tia card, I'm sorry. And this one is, like, this one's a little different, because, like, for the, for the original one, the original one was, like, five mana, you also get, you also used to get ward as well, if you, if you fulfilled the quest, or if you, or if you, sorry, or if you, like, fulfilled the, fulfilled the combo aspect of it, but for this one, you, you just get to change its mana cost a bunch of times. Um, and yeah, for this one, I know, I know going, I know going into the set, many people aren't really, aren't really, like, excited for this card at all, which, which I think is, like, actually, like, kind of, kind of insane. Now, mind you, I, I say, like, when I say insane, I mean, like, insane in the whole, it's a pretty good card, and it's one of the, it's one of those kind of good cards, so the, literally, the only thing you really need, the only thing, the only thing that you really need in order to, like, make it, like, in order to make it, like, very, you know, blatantly obvious that this card is, like, good, is essentially compare this card to Water, to Water Fairy. So, these, these cards are essentially both the same thing, that, that they both generate you, that they both generate you a card, but, it, now, mind you, they do it in different ways, but for one card, one, that one card can, o can only ever get you a fairy, which is a 1-1, one -one, and that's kind of negligible, whereas this one can get, get you a 4-4, four -four, right? Now, additionally, the other things that, like, same thing as Water Fairy, you can play, you can play this card in, in a variety of spots, on a, on a variety of turns, in a variety of ways, and, um, and still be able to do the things that you want to do with it. Now, obviously speaking, you might not you might not always get, get the one mana one uh, get the one mana four four, but you'll still get a four four. That's still very very good for for pretty much like every single four star type. 
now there's certain like again like when i say spots I, like i mean mean things like say five mana or six mana possibly oh, even four mana if you wanted to do it um of say going say like turn four going like i don't know like uh fairy whisperer fairy then then, then, then tia boom done or say four mana going second um rain water fairy tia evolve rain see or say or say five mana same thing you know two two uh two drops of some sort rain tia or say six mana um water fairy or fairy um Matera, then Tia, you know, same things like that. Mind you, in a lot of these situations, you'll, you'll, you'll be using fairies to do this, but that's fine. You're playing Forest Trap. Forest Trap generates fairies. Like, that's, you know, it kind of just goes together, right? Um, and it's still just, like, very, very nice, just because, like, it, hel it helps you, it helps you maintain gas. It helps you just, you know, maintain things you can, like, keep doing and whatnot. Just because, like, Forest is one of those decks, like, at a certain point, at a certain point in some of your games, particularly the games where you usually lose, you'll notice that, oh, I have, like, nothing but fairies in my hand. What the hell do I do? How, how am I winning this game? In the past, you used to have fairy trappers that be able to like pluck, be able to like kind like, of like pluck, sack even to win anyway. But now fairy trappers rotating, so in rotation you're not gonna have that. Like you're not actually going, you're gonna actually want to be having as many like real cards as you can, right? So this card just helps for that. Next card, Veil vale of the Gleaming Axe. So this card is a seven mana four four board. Whenever an ally follows destroy, it's a trap one from the cost of this card. So this card is very very cool. Um, now I've seen I've seen I've seen this type of effect in many in many different card games and literally every single time every single time without fail I've seen I've seen this type of effect the card is almost always broken so I expect this card to be broken um with without a doubt. Now the obvious thing the obvious question will be like oh do, do they keep consistent with um with, with, with cost reduction and the hand type effects like this and do they actually make it so you have to actually have it in your hand or or can or will this card just trigger when you have it in the deck if it triggers we have it in the deck that makes this card even prettier than it already is. But if it happens, if it happens, if it happens, yeah, but if it happens, if it has to happen in the in the hand and whatnot, it makes the card a lot easier to deal with, but it's still very, very, very annoying when it happens. Like, for example, like, say things like, say, Eagle Man, or, um, much, mainly just Eagle Man. Many times when the Eagle Man would come down, you just think, well, fuck, I lost. Like, <laughs> just because Eagle Man is just, like, very, very tanky, and it, it kind of comes down, it can you know, come down for zero mana. Same thing, with, same thing with this card, except with this card, you can also just, you know, play your deck, you, like, with, um, with Eagle Man, you had to be playing neutrals, but those cards just whenever anything dies. So, I, so ideally, you're gonna have you're gonna want to have a lot of a lot of fairies die. But then when they die, you can just go ahead and like pop off and just you know um, make some like crazy plays happen. Like for example, there's a bunch of like cute solvin plays you can make happen with this guy. You can do this. You can pair this guy up with Green Glen Axe Knight. You can pair this guy up with Tia card. Um, so, you know a lot of different synergies and combos and things like that you can do with this card. That makes this card uh, a card to, a card to watch out for. Apostle Open Killing. Apostle Open Killing is a five minute three six. Fanfare rarely put a spell that put that costs one play point for less from your deck into your hand. This card's very very nuts. Um like even, hell, even this card had just said this that so would make this card very, very crazy. But um but but even the secondary effect is also crazy. At the end of your turn, restore defense is equal to the number of enemy followers in play. So for the unkilling archetype, if I didn't already talk about it, essentially what they want to do is they wanna weaken you by not killing you. Or, 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 and things like, like, say for example, you know, you know how like a hunter, how like when the hunter hunts or whatever, how they like aim for like, they don't like aim for like vitals like your heart and things like that, how they like aim for like your legs and things that just, you know, kind of cripple you. That, that's, that's basically what this, what this sub arc tries to do, sort of. So, this one, this guy cripples you by, by making it so like, oh, for each creature you have in play, I, I basically kind of like shrug off that damage and things like that. But part of why this card is like, is nuts is just because of his stat line. His stat line and then the set and then the secondary at the end, at the end of your turn effect. So a 3-6 unit is very, very good and versus pretty much every single archetype. Just because like, it's, it's an, it's an annoyance for aggro to kill. It probably, it probably just shapes like comes out and then just like murders aggro unless they can kill you somehow. Um, versus mid-range, it's annoying because they can, they can make body traits pretty easily into your smaller units control it's just a three six that kind of like requires two cards to get rid of it so you always get a plus plus two out of, out of the deal which is like very very nice um and of course for that you'll search a spell you can search for airbound garage you can search for uh for mark of the killing which we'll talk about later um and those are two very very potent spells you want to, you want to just be able to you know, have in your hand early yeah the card is great i i 100 expect, expect to see this card and possibly see see a shift of fast force play and back to slow force play just so, just so you're able to play stuff like this. Hornet Soldier. Hornet Soldier is a 5 minute 5 5 4. And for choose put either a Hornet a Hornet Warrior or a Hornet a Hornet Stink into your into your hand. And then 
put both into your hand instead of if you play at least two of the cards this turn. So essentially, if you want to be able to take up both of these to your hand, you have to you have to wait until turn seven or possibly turn six if you have a if you have a, if you have a mail in your hand and that's like very. Okay. But for the actual for the actual token, so the Hornet Warrior is a two mana one one with Russian Bane. So basically, it's like a sight there, except you can't face. Um, you have to get it off this guy, so that makes it that, that makes it pretty telegraph. Um, and then the Hornet Stink is three mana, deal three damage to enemy leader. So this card is this card is pretty. It's pretty honest, but it's also a little bit too honest because it can only ever go face. You can't really use it to, uh, to trade into creatures. So essentially, it's like a, it's like a minus one unless you unless you're using it to, to directly kill your opponent, which is you know cool, great, amazing. Um, so you'll probably see so you probably will see this card played in aggro possibly because it's a nice finisher maybe um, for just you know, dealing with three damage. But aside from that, I'm not really sure where else you're gonna see it. You might you might possibly see it in the slow force because of the Hornet Warrior, but I don't really think he will because you're already playing Apostle up and killing. And most force, the most slow force also play, um, also play Venus as well for for, for this. This way they have like infinite card draw. That's already a lot of five drops. So, so, I, so I don't think you'll see. I don't think you'll see much of this card. Next card, Mark of the Killing. So this is the card I was talking about earlier. So this one is a very very crazy zero cost spell. Yes, that's right, zero cost spell. Uh, banish an enemy follower with zero attack or less. Then draw a card. Enhance six. Banish any enemy follower instead. So this card is very very powerful just because it has two different modes. Now. Uh, the reason why this card is so powerful is just that if it just had one mode, it probably wouldn't be as crazy. But because it has two, it, it gives it gives itself a, a little bit of of self redundancy in the fact that like you will always be able to use it for something. Now, for the banish banish of enemy followers zero attack or less, this does kind of uh, go into the whole unkilling thing that I mentioned before, in which like a lot of these cards will be will be like aiming to reduce your attack, um, reduce your attack set to make it to make it a lot harder for you to be, for you to be able to play back. And of course, in this guy, you can just go ahead and you know, reduce the attack side of something, then just go ahead and banish it. That's like ni that's like nice. It also cycles itself in the process. So the cy the cycling of itself, it, it again it again applies that self redundancy because many of the uh, many of the uh, killing cards they, they just reduce stats. They don't do anything else. But now with this guy, you can also with this card, you go ahead and you get to reduce the stats and kill it and draw a card. And so you just kind of cycle yourself a little bit through the deck while also moving creature uh, uh, from play. So disciple of killing is a four mana three four. Um, give Vampir give an enemy leader minus four minus zero until the end until the end of your opponent's turn. So you see here what I'm talking about the whole just oh we just like we just like reduces stats. Now mind you that, that all of this being said, typically speaking in card games, what you want to do is you still want to actually just be able to when you when you have the op when you have the ability to kill a creature just to kill the creature straight up. But with this, there's now some like nice trade offs like you know you can play you can play a slower paced game if you want um, and things like that. So that's a three four. It's like very very it's like decently tanky. It's like like directly statted. Um, typically speaking, three fours you should usually require your opponent to fall over them, otherwise they lose more problem, and they can't be removed by three damage spells. So it's like very, very nice. Um, next, the servant I've been killing. Servant I've killing. This is basically a smaller version of this, of this, of this girl. Um, it's two mana two, and then minus one, minus zero until the end of your opponent's turn. So this card is very, very small. But um, actually, I, I actually want to go ahead and, and talk about what, talk about talk about why this card in particular is a little bit better than the a little bit better than, than, than the disciple. The reason why this card is a little bit better than the disciple is just because of the mana cost. This one comes down to two mana, and this card is nice because if you go second, you can neuter your opponent your, your opponent's creatures. This way they can't trade into you. So if for some reason you actually need to be able to trade into something else. Boom, you can now do that with this card. That kind that kind of that kinda helps the whole going first versus going second situation a little bit. Just like nice. Next we have a fairy circle reprint. So I'm not really gonna talk much about this because like for many of you, if you've been playing the game for a while, you know why fairy circle is good. Um and of course, if you haven't, like here, here's, here's, here's a quick rundown. Basically, it gives you it's a one man spell that gives you other one man spells. So it so, so helps facilitate making things like say the, the Tia play that I mentioned earlier happen happen a lot easier, a lot safer. You can do it on four, you can do it on you know whatever you want to do it. Here, here you go, you got it. It also helps make it also helps make Insecord a lot better as well. I mean, Insecord didn't really need, didn't really need help being good, but he's now he's much better than he was before. Crazy. Next. We have the Furious Mountain Deity. This is a four mana, three four. Vampire enhanced seven, gain plus two plus two and rush. And then whenever the spell attacks, gain plus what gain plus one plus zero. So this card is it's, this card's very, very nice control tool. I like this card a lot. It's basically a what is this? It becomes a five six 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 rush guy when uh on seven. It's a very very nice control tool. Um I I, sus I suspect this card might see play when Greenland accent rotates possibly, but this card is still very, very nice for what it does. Uh, it's also a very, very good arena card as well. So, I like this card a lot. 
them Whispering Woods. Whispering Woods is a 2 mana amulet. Countdown 1, Vampire select an enemy follower and can attack next turn. Um, and then Vampire Enhanced 4, add to, the, add to you to this amulet's countdown. So this, that's like kind of nice. It's kind of like a nice prison card. And then at the end of your turn, put a random forest craft follower from your deck into your hand. So this card is nuts. This card is a very, very good control tool. Just because it helps, you know, control the board. Also, it, it also sort of pays for itself because every single turn while this card is going on, you get to keep adding, you get to keep adding forest followers to your hand um, from your deck. So you just get, you just get to go ahead and just kind of like dig through your deck a little, a little bit each turn. So it's like not bad. Um, this card will probably, will probably almost surely see play, but all, but, but thankfully, will probably only see play in slower type of forest decks just because like the the effect is very slow. It doesn't actually, doesn't actually contribute anything to the board itself other, other than just you know denying an opponent from being attack but even something like that does actually go quite a ways so. and then lastly we have the Cassio we have the Cassiopeia leader card reprint so it's cool um not gonna talk about this because you can see like it's it's still the same Cassiopeia it's just armor it's just, like, weird. all right next one we'll talk about the sword I believe yeah the sword all right so for sword uh sword is 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 Ursi patient or Usurpation is, I, I don't actually know how to pronounce that, but anyway. So basically just like stealing things from other people and like giving it to yourself and just uh, stuff like that. So here we have Octrice. Octrice uh, is the, is, is their omen. So she is a 3 mana 2-3. Fanfare, remove all last word effects on an enemy follower and give, and give all of those effects, not just one, no, no, all of them to this follower instead. So this card is, so, this, so that, that part right there is already like kind of wild. Just because like, Many people right now are, are a little bit like self-conscious about their last words, just because like you know, uh, what if my last word guy gets banished and whatnot? You know, which is already you know a, a, pr a pretty a pretty um, saddening prospect. But now with this girl, you can steal you can steal their last words, and that that's, that becomes even even more horrifying because you have to like actually like now you have to actually like try to burst the sword. You have to try like give give them a give them a, a seemingly shit last word for them to want to steal, and, and then and then go ahead and play your real last word guy. So that kind of like slows you down by a turn or whatnot, and like like, like trying to like play around it. Um, but obviously, you know, uh, good sword players probably won't take the bait, um, and bad sword players will, but yeah. Um, but well, obviously, if that was all this card did, then, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be here. But no, the card does more. It does even more than this. So the other thing that the card does is pay for enhanced 8, 8 plus 2 plus 2, and the ability to evolve for zero, for zero evolution points. Now, now I'm not sure that the, the, zero, the zero evolution point thing is just tied to this, just tied to this card, or if that's like, or if that's like a permanent kind of like leader buff thing. I'm pretty sure it's just tied to this card. Um, yeah. So, so I get to evolve for zero, for zero evolution points, and then, um, then recover two play points, and then when she evolves, you get to add what are, what are known as loot tokens to your hand. The loot tokens, are, there are four of these, there are currently four of these. Um, there's the Gilded, yeah, the Gilded Blade, the Gilded Goblet, the Gilded Boots, and the Gilded Necklace. So the Gilded Blade does one damage, does one damage. The Gilded Goblet, I believe, heals for two. Uh, the Gilded Boots gives you rush, and then the Gilded Necklace gives you plus one, plus one. Uh, of these, the Gilded Blade is, is probably going to be the weakest one. Gilded, Gilded Goblet and Gilded, Gilded Boots are probably going to be the two better ones. And then Gilded Necklace will kind of be like, eh. It will kind of be like, you know, third best, but it's like not bad. Next we have the Young King, Jiraiya. Um... <laughs> Sorry about that. So Jiraiya is a 9 mana 8 8. Uh, accelerate 2, change the enemy leaders, uh, sorry, an enemy followers of attack and defense to 1 1. And then Vampire, when you play, we play for the full mana cost, change all enemy uh, followers of attack and defense to 1 1. So this card is very, very nice. This card is uh, particularly nice for like, something like, say, Aegis, because it actually makes the. Most people only play 1 Aegis, so they can like play this card to counter their Aegis to make it a 1 1. It's like kind of like, cute. Um, for the actual card itself, I think the card costs, costs a little bit too much mana. But that's fine. I can I can also understand why it costs so much mana. But uh, the card's pretty nice. I like it a lot. I will definitely try. To, I'll definitely try, be trying to play with this card at some point and try to like you know make some kind of like control sword type thing work. But uh, yeah, you're hoping. Next we have Rapier Master. Rapier Master is, is a one mana gold, um, and it has a bunch of fam it has a bunch of fam enhances. Essentially, each each each, each time you each time you you give it a, you give it a higher tier of uh, enhance it gains. It gains uh, an additional an additional stat point and also an additional um, effect text. So the you want to try to aim to get somewhere in between um, 
two, three, and four, because those, those ones are the, those are the ones that, are, that, that also give you effect decks as well. Uh, the first one gives you pain, the second one gives you more, uh, and then of course the third one gives you rush. And then lastly, the, the, the temp one, the, sorry, the temp you enhance it doesn't do anything. So again, like I said, you want to try to enhance it anywhere from like four, four, two to four times. Um, now the enhance is very, very strong, just because it's a one mana card. Uh, it's, sorry, it's a one mana officer unit, which is very, very powerful because it, it has synergy with Latham. It also has synergy with, like, say, Sky Fortress as well. Um, just because, like, under Latham, this card becomes, like, it, it becomes basically a Zeus, sort of. It becomes a Zeus that just kind of has, like, all these, like, keywords that can go face and things like that. It's, like, very, very nice. Um, I don't know where you're going to see this card played, but I, 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 I mean, obviously, speaking, you're, you're going to see it played in, like, Latham decks, but I don't know where else because I don't know how good this card is on its own. Next, you have the Apostle of Verse Patient. Apostle of Verse Patient is a 5 mana, 4 5. Manfred, you want, you want damage to an enemy. Uh, so the, and this is enemy, which means it can hit base, it can hit a unit, you know, things like that. And then randomly put one, one of the follow up one of the follow up fleet cards in your hand, so you know, just get the plate, up with the beast, and then the necklace. And then um, whenever you play a loot card, again, which is the above, you, you deal two damage to, to a random enemy follower. So this card is very, is very, very strong. It's also kind of mad at the same time. Uh, the reason why it's mad is because of the fact. Well, I'm sorry. The reason why it's somewhat mad is because of the fact that that the that the dealing to damage part is, is random. If it was targeted, you know, well, we, we could definitely have a conversation about that. Um, now, for the actual body of the card itself, the, the actual body of the card itself is like perfectly fine. Um, just because it's poor mana five, four five, uh, and that's already a pretty good, pretty good stat line. If you don't believe me, look at cards like you know, sort of look at cards like say um, the bolt. Um, so very, 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 very potent stat line. Very, very, very cool stuff. Uh, the, the, the gaining, gaining loot cards to your hand is also nice as well, just because it means that like, you have, um, you have an extra utility outlet for your loot cards. You can, like, say, you have to maybe, like, hold this, like, like, later in the game, and then just, like, play a bunch of loot cards on it, and then, um, and then go ahead and, like, just, like, flip the board, and, like, go ahead and maybe just, like, make units and whatnot. So it's, like, kind of cool. Disciple of, of Ursipation. Uh, 3 and a 2, 3, ambush. Whenever you play a loot card, gain plus 1, gain plus 0, plus 1. Whenever this follower attacks, randomly put randomly put a loot card into your hand. So basically, this card is gonna be like kind of nice. It, it makes some like very, very cheeky value trades and things like that in the early game. Um, now it is kind of a it is kind of a slower card, but the other but the other big factor for this card is that this card does have ambush. So the ambush part is actually very important because it means that you can use this for you, it means that you can use this in aggro to try to go ahead and fit and fish for better loot cards. It means you can go ahead and like go ahead and try to like you know, break damage with that. Um, it also helps seal your combos as well. Um, so yeah, mainly mainly, mainly just this too. So, so I definitely expect to, that you probably see this play. That you'll probably see this played in aggro alongside of that, alongside like things like say Juliet and also Tanya. But yeah. Allo Day, Allo Day is a four mana three three, and if Vampire choose put either a flare flare ring spear or a frost ring spear into your hand. The flare ring spear is a four mana deal three damage to enemy follower, then deal three damage to enemy leader. So basically, a super piercing ring effect. This this effect by itself is already very very good. It's because like. One of the issues, one of the criticisms about the sword is that the sword has like no reach, and they have like no other utility other than oh, well, I'm just gonna play units on, onto the board and hope to God they can hit them at some point. Um, but it's just like very, very nice, just because like it helps give you like damage reach, and that's like very, very like damage reach is actually a very, very, very key factor to how good you as a deck are going to be. Um, then of course the Frostling Spear. Frostling Spear is given given unevolved ally baller the ability to evolve for, for zero evolution points. So I. Th yeah, I think there's like a buff card of some sort, which is like kind of nice. Um, and the other thing is that like it costs two mana, so it's not like for free. One of the like like Lewis Mage was was one of those cards that was like both beloved and hated by by, by, by people alike because people didn't like the whole oh we, we get we get everything for free and things like that. Yeah, people didn't like that part. But um, but the other thing is that the is that is that like having the ability to evolve to evolve. Um, with, with more than just the, the two or three play points, that you, uh, two or three evolution orbs you get, it's a very, very big deal for Sword in particular, just because, again, Sword needs, to con Sword needs to contest the board more than any other deck in the game. So, very, very, very cool card. I, I like this card a lot just because it, it's, it's not a nice to choose option. The card the card itself is, little, is just a little bit understated, and that's great. Wonderful. This, this is what I like to see. Next card is the High Seas Hero. High Seas Hero is just a 3 mana 3 3 no text at all, and it's an officer. So you'll probably see this card played in aggro, um, just because, again, stat line, everything is nice. It's alright. Um, next after that, we have Weather Vanguard, which is also another 3 mana card. 
Well, this one is a 3 out of 2 3 with, hit, with Vampire and Hand 7 7 3 Steel Clad Knights. If you don't know what a Steel Clad Knight is, those are the 2 mana 2 2 vanilla token to a sword. Um, the reason why this card is good is because this, this card kind of allows you, if you're playing, you're still playing Arthur Sword, this card kind of allows you to kind of like double down on the whole Arthur Sword aspect and be able to play and be able to play six faux copies of Arthur. So I'm gonna call I call them faux copies of Arthur, but really you, you probably you can call them Arthur's uh, 0.5. So so um, so you have 4.5 copies of an Arthur. Maybe 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 you can count it as like a full value Arthur. I don't really know. Um, now obviously speaking, it doesn't actually do the full thing that Arthur does, which is actually pull cards from your deck and just put them into play. Which is, like, which is actually a very small, which is actually a very, very underrated aspect of Arthur. Well, this card does give you a, a, compar a comparable amount of creatures on, on the board. Um, to then go ahead and synergize with your with turn eight plays and play is to maybe say playing Sky Fortress or maybe or maybe say playing Latham or maybe say giving you the freedom to play uh, to play your off trice and things like that. So, so the, the, the card's very very good. I expect this card to see play. This card is actually one of, one of the stronger bronzes in this set, I think. All right, next we have Battlefield Beauty. Battlefield Beauty is a four mana three four flash deal one damage to enemy a random enemy follower. So I don't actually don't like this card that much because it's is is deal it to a random enemy follower. So that kind of makes it kind of sad. Um, the card's probably good. the card's probably a good kick card, but I'm I'm not really seeing it because you can play that much. But yeah, that was just like fine. Next we have the next we have the Servant of Precipitation. This one is a two mana one one flash. Game plus one plus one, randomly put one of the following cards into your hand, which you which, know one of the weak cards. Uh, so this card is very, very nice because like this card has a very, very underrated, underrated effect. Basically, it she essentially permanently kills one HP followers. You cannot keep one HP follower and this guy and this guy on the same battlefield because if you do, it, your, your point just, just, your point just it definitely gets to get plus twos. Like the plus one when he attacks and doesn't die, but it's also there's also it's also a plus two when you. When he, when, he kill, when he takes away one of your creatures, so obviously, like, like the bigger this guy gets, the scarier, the scarier and scarier it is for you. Um, just because, like, he'll get more and more loot. The more loot he gets, the worse off he will be, because, because like, eventually, he's, he's gonna hit you all. Um, <laughs> pun unintended. And he'll, and he'll, hit, he'll probably hit, like, a, a few good, like, really, really good, like, loot cards of some sort, which, again, as you know, um, the, the, the loot card that gets you crushed, that, that one's probably the best one, or one of the best ones. Next we have the, the Usurping Spine Blade. So as I kind of mentioned with the Forest one, so all of the omens usually they all kind of have they all kind of have their own like signature spell like this. Um, so the Usurping Spine Blade is basically deal three damage, you mana deal three damage to enemy follower, then put then put a loot card into your hand. This card is very very nice. So this, the reason this the reason why I accept this card to be played over over something like say Shield of Flames is because you get a loot card in your hand. Loot card, as you know, or um, as it essentially has like a 50 50 percent chance to be anecdotally just like insane. Um, but depending on like if you need the blade or if you need the sorry uh, depending on if you need the goblet or if you need the boots that of course still still pretty good just because you know the, the necklace and the and the blade are also pretty decent as well um and also unlike shield of flame this card does not have an enhanced effect so you'll never have to worry about oh well i have well i have like eight mana and i want to play and want to play all like a bunch of cards but i can't do it because like the enhance is gonna like screw me over if you're if you want to i guess get worried about that so that's cool and of course here we have the tokens if you want to see them but they don't really matter that much, so. Alright, so moving on, we're, we're gonna be going ahead and, and wrapping up this video with uh, with Runecraft. So, Runecraft uh, is, is is I think it's I think one of the one of the one of the classes that I think like looked to be one of the most uh, one of the most hyped for and dreaded parts of the set. So. First, you have Ryo, the Omen of Truth. Ryo is is seven mana vampire. Spells all cards in your deck nine times. Um, so the spell boost thing about Ryo is like is like very is like very wild. But obviously, like Ryo himself, it's very meh. Now, the only reason why, why I think this card is like just slightly better than CD is because like this card has like has like longer as as like longer reaching. It has like longer reaching uh, ripple effects to what it does. So to put this in its perspective for you. Every single spell boost, every single spell boost card in your deck will be, will be pretty much like fully charged and just you know ready to go. So, for example, um, let's 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 say something, let's say something as small as like say Fate's Hand or like, like say or, or say Wind Blast. So as you know, Wind Blast off, off off the top of your deck is a two mana is two mana dual one. You know, very very, very mad, right? Doesn't actually do anything. But but but, but Poach Ryo it becomes a two mana deal ten. Two mana deal ten. That's that's nuts. Or of course, you know, with Fate's Hand, Fate's Hand becomes a 
becomes a zero mana draw two. Um, Flame Destroy becomes a becomes a one mana seven seven. Um, D Shift becomes a what's what like twenty mana now? Yeah, D Shift becomes a becomes a becomes an eleven mana take an extra turn. Like things like that become like very very wild, right? Um, now obviously obviously the, the card itself is is very very slow. We have to remember that like you have things like say Fire Embrace and things like that to go ahead and actually like make make the transition smoother for you. Lastly, I know many people are like, oh, well, I really, really dislike playing D Shift and whatnot, or sorry, like Eagle, so I really, really like dis dislike playing Slow Pusher and whatnot, just because of the whole, oh, well, if I don't draw my insert win the game card here, uh, by turn one, I'm going to lose. But I think that this card, as as well as well as the as well as the full card, which we'll talk about like later, kind of like kind of like short, kind of short some of these weaknesses. Now, whether or not this card, like, whether or not this card actually see play, that's not that's not that's not on me. Um, I, I don't I don't play rune like that, and there, I knew that there are a lot of like crazy 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 rune activists out there who just like play play a ton of rune, and will probably find something that makes this card kind of crazy. But um, but I think expect this card to maybe see play with the, without the without the, without the, without the, without the Cycle, which again we'll talk about, we'll talk about shortly. But yeah, moving on. Prophetess of Creation. Uh, before you get into this card, no, your screen's not broken. Yes, this is, is a 20 mana 2020. Um, this card has a ton of text. We'll just gonna go right on into it. Let me just, let me just go and actually enlarge it for you there. Um, so it is accelerate 10, draw a card, then put a Prophetess of Creation into your deck and recover nine play points. So you don't really care about this about the about this that much. This is just this is just extra tendency to make sure that you don't have to like worry about about drawing these and having having this be a giant brick in your hand. Um, and then invocation at the end of your turn, put a Prophetess of Creation from your deck in from your deck into play. If you played if you played cards that initially that originally cost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, and 10 play points this match. This card cannot be targeted by, sp by spells and effects, cannot be destroyed by spells and effects, and um, it can only be destroyed by damage from, from, effects, from effects or attacks. So basically, you can't, you, so basically, it's like, this is like an Aegis, but, but, it's like a, but it's a little bit more of a fair Aegis, because you have to, like, you have to break your spine to, like, to get this to play, unless you're like playing Ginger or something like that. Um, and this card, is, this, this card is, is one of the most, like, hyped for cards in the set, just, like, it, it like it's a crazy invocation effect. It's like if you if you actually get this in play, like you're like well you're just like you're just like sitting on on some like on some uh nice highlight reels and whatnot. But um, but it, it takes a lot to get this card to play. It really really does. And I, I think that I think that's, that's like a, it's like a thing that people are kind of like, you know, kind of forgetting or like not really like they, not taking into account. But again, it's 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 just like a nice kind of just a nice good just like it's like a nice and or good design direction I think. Uh, just because like it's one of those like clearly clearly you like work harder to, to fulfill this quest right work harder to, to fulfill this quest and here here's your tangible reward that actually just intangible onto the board that like makes you feel good about having about having succeeded what, whatever it was that you were doing and I, I like I like I like seeing I like seeing cards like this whenever you can so uh, cards pretty the card itself when you, once you actually get into play is like very very nuts very very wild but it takes a lot it takes a while to get into play so I don't know I don't know how much how much how much play of this we'll see. But I definitely know that it will probably maybe end up like somewhere that people will end up playing a lot even if, even if it's like bad. Just because like it's very quite it's just it, it feels it will probably feel very, very satisfying once you actually get to play it. Next card we have Anne Mysterian Prodigy. So Anne Mysterian Prodigy will this will probably be the card that actually like that actually pushes Mysteria into into more relevant into more into into a, into a clearly oh this 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 craft is good. Uh, people were wrong. Like once I would say that this thing that this like deck would be bad. No, this, like, this card right here probably 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 pushes it right on into the whole it's good territory. So, oh sorry, it's good. It's good and or great. Anyway, so this is a nine mana four four. Uh, keep in mind that like that, like every single time we, we see we see a rune card with, with with this with this particular stat line, it's all, the card is almost always like very very very, very annoying for what it does. So, and this card is no exception. So this card is Amber Cheese. Put either an Ant Summoning or an Ant Sorcery into your hand. Whenever you play a Mysterious card, for subtract one from the cost of this card. Again, I'm going to assume that this is in your hand, and that, that, that would just like make it a oh, while well, this card's in your deck, going back. That'd be silly. Um, so if you want to know what the Ant Summoning does, here this it does. It's two mana, five five, Ward and Rush. At the end of your turn, Vanish its follower, and then. And then same as the Unvolved Form. Now keep in mind this this card the, the trade for this card is actually mysterious. So it's actually it's actually very relevant for this for the second card, um, which is Ant Sorcery. So Ant Sorcery is a, is a ten mana spell, um, which is already you know, pretty pretty hype. And this deal X to an enemy. So mind you, enemy can mean either leader or or, or creature. 
and then X equals the number of other Mysterian cards you've played in this match. So this card becomes this card is a, this card is a very very large payoff card for the O. Well, I had to play a bunch of janky Mystery cards to get here, but now here's my payoff. Here's my 10 mana, we'll probably take 10 damage to the face and probably die. Um, under Mysterio herself, I, I, I guess I guess we deal like one more, so... So if you play, so like, I, don't know, I guess if you play, you say, a bunch of Mysterio Knowledges, so like, that's three. Mysterio herself for five. Um, the and six. You know, like, if you if you only play those, this card would be like a 10 mana deal six. And that's, like, that's already pretty good. But of course, you still have other things like, say, Miss Miranda. Um, that can be like like up that count to eight, you know things like that. So this card will be for every strong card. I expect I 100 I 100 expect myself to die to this card at some point during during this um during this uh during this set. I won't get me upset when it happens, but hey, I've already I've already mentally prepared myself. But yeah, the card the card's still very nice because like for people who are like oh Mr. Mystery doesn't have a good finisher. This is your, this is your oh this is a good finisher good finisher. So that's really cool. Moment of truth. This is. Sorry, Apostle of Truth. I'm sorry, Apostle of Truth. This is the um, this is the one I was talking about earlier that that, that works with the Omen, I think. So this card has a lot of far of far-reaching applications. So, so it's going to just like cover the effect first. Fanfare: Discard a card with spell boost from your hand. You put a random card with spell boost that originally costs more than the discarded card from your deck to your hand, and that spell boost x times x equals the number of times the discarded card has been spell boosted. So what this means is that is that I know many people were like, oh. Well, giant chimera or like or like or shift or whatever, they both suck unless unless you have unless you have the required card to win in your hand from like from turn one or something like that. This card this card helps you helps you ignore that rule, um, or, or or I guess like ignore that fact and, and gives you like extra redundancy for that. Now, for in the case of D shift, what this will mean is that you'll they want to discard a flame destroyer to grab a D shift and then put it and put it from your deck into your hand. Um, the reason we want to discard the flame destroyer is because flame destroyer will cost will cost the most amount of mana in in. Uh, in uh, that's also a spell boostable card, so that, that we can search for this. Um, for a rotation, you'll want to discard a you want to discard a despondent chimera or or, or a truce adjudication. Um, that will let you search for the chimera. Now, mind you, I, I'm pretty, pretty sure you're, you're, you're usually going to want to start, you're usually going to want to discard the despondent chimera if you have a choice. But yeah, um, discard those again. They get then go ahead and search for your giant chimera, and then of course you get to transfer over all the spell boosts. So basically, it's like saying that you had it's like saying that you had it in your hand the entire time. Now, mind you, the discard thing doesn't actually matter because you're essentially discarding to pull to pull a different card from your deck, so it's like a minus zero, um, or, or, or it's like either like a minus zero or like a minus one if, if you completely mess with this card. Um, that's still very, very strong, just because again, like being able to say, "Oh, haha, it was in my hand the entire time," it kind of go, it kind of goes a long way to being able to throw off your opponent because like, they're not gonna know they're not gonna know what you discard or what you search. So, um, very, 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 very big deal. Now. The other thing I like about this card is that again, you can you can you, you can use this for, for a lot of different like applications. Like for example, like oh, oh, the Ryo thing I mentioned earlier, you can play Ryo and then like and then possibly like uh, I guess like discard a I don't know like um again a Despawn Chimera or something like that in your deck. Uh, this, this discard a, discard a Despawn Chimera um, from your hand. Then go ahead and then go ahead and search for a Flame Shirt. Now say that now say that the Sorry, not Flame Shirt. The search for a uh, the search for a Jack Chimera. Now, say for example, the Spawn of Chimera in your hand had like I don't know, I guess like let, 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 let's, let's gonna be generous. Let, let's say eight spell boost, right? Um, now the Chimera that you search will, will have will have will have will be doing twenty damage. Twenty damage, and you just searched it that turn. That's nuts, right? That's very, very nuts. Very, very crazy. Um, and and it helps give a lot of redundancy. I, I can't stress that enough. This card is like a very, 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 very cool card. I, I I'll be very, very surprised if this card does not survive. Sleep incantation. So this is a three minute spell. Draw a card. A random follower can't attack until start until start of your next turn. So mind you, when it says random follower, this does in fact mean it can actually hit your followers, your followers as well. But keep in mind that um that your runecraft, sorry that your slow shroom, and typically, typically speaking, slow shroom usually doesn't play creatures unless you're killing your opponent that turn. So um or, or unless you have to you have to because you have to turn, obviously like but, but that general idea is that like you'll, you'll be able you'll be able to, to somewhat control the random the, control the randomness of this card. Um, but yeah, can't attack until, until, the start of your, until the start of your next turn. And then return the follower to, to the player's hand instead if you have played 20 cards. Sorry, if you have uh, drawn if you have drawn 20 cards or less from your deck or whatever. Um, so this, this like adds on to the whole 20 cards or less from your deck archetype. It's like a, like a sub theme or whatever. Um, this card's still pretty good. The reason why, the reason why I like this card is because this card's actually kind of nice. Um, the reason this card's really, really nice is because you can actually play it with the... You can actually... Um, is that if you get lucky, or I guess unlucky, 
or whatever, you can end up bouncing your you can end up bouncing your um, your Abyss Summoner to then replay then replay your Abyss Summoner again while drawing your card, so, which seems like kind of silly, but I actually liked it a lot. Like, because you can say I uh, like like let's say for example trade trade with your Abyss Summoner or help, you can go face if you want to, uh, deal six, th then then bounce it, then replay it, then then um then go ahead and grab another Storm Guy, and have the Storm Guy hit face. That's ten damage. I mana ten damage. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Um. Now, is this card good enough to see play? I don't actually know. I, I, I feel like it is, but, but I, I don't actually know because, again, uh, many times it, if you if you if you're in a spot to kill a creature, you, you usually prefer to just kill the creature instead of just like bouncing it or doing anything like that. So. All right. So this card is probably top two, for maybe top three, maybe top five uh, most hated cards uh, for this set, hands down. Which is obviously, which is obviously, I'm gonna have to talk about it. So. Truce Adjudication, six mana. Summon, it, summon a Guardian Golem and give it plus X plus X. Deal Y, deal y to the end, deal y damage to the enemy leader and then restore two defense to your leader. Um, sorry, restore Z defense. I'm sorry, Z defense to your leader. X, Y, and Z equal the number of times this card is spell boosted. And then it's also split randomly between the three effects. So, this card is one of the cards that, that, I, that, I, as, that I, as a player person, just dislike about card games. Um, and that, like, you know, there's, there's, like a, there's, like, a slight, subtle emphasis on ran, on ran uh, on having, having, like, random effects. Because, like, this card is one of those, it's one of those cards, like, it did not, it did not need to have, have the, have, like, the extra layer of randomness that it does. But, yeah, for some reason, it, it's, it's been allowed to have that, just because people, people, like, really want to, like, watch people, like, get, like, get, like screwed up by randomness or whatever. Well, it's not, it's not a fun thing to experience for yourself, so it's, like, it kind of makes you, like, very, very, very sad to see that this card does actually, actually exist. So, to break it down for you, for why this card is crazy... It's crazy for a number of reasons. One, it's a six mana card that they will actually want to play your deck. So, because um, for the because because where, where, whereas I like listed all those like other things or whatever, uh, to, to have like to like discard the search for giant chimera rotation, you can play this card as well. Just discard this card. Cause this card will probably will probably see better than giant chimera than um than this amount of chimera. Now, the other reason why, why this card's broken is because like it, it literally all three effects are all things you want to have happen. You want to be able. To, you want to be able to have a, have a fat sack ward. You want to be able to deal damage to the enemy leaders this week. This week, like some, like set them up for, for a giant camera spike. And lastly, you want to be able to destroy, destroy a defense your leader on the off chance that oh hey, why well, I need to like survive for, for a bunch of turns longer to be able to like, do stuff. This card does them all very, very nicely. Um, but you will want to have a lot of have a lot of spells on this card. But it, I think as long as you have like I, don't know, I guess like let's let's, let's let's go and be generous. Let's say like nine spell boosts maybe nine spell boosts on this card. Then yeah, this card becomes like great. But that's like nine spell boosts. So that, that's like. Well, I'm not gonna say it's like hard to do, but it's it it, 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 it becomes significantly like, like like less good unless unless you have it unless you like already had it in your hand from jump and whatnot, or unless you like do your unless you like um search for it with the the apostle or unless she's like the Ryo. So will this card play? Probably. Will it be annoying? Probably. How how effective is it? I don't know. And that's and that, that's, that's, that's that's the big part about this. I, I don't actually know how how effective this card is going to be. Um, just because, like, again, like, it's not, it's not pseudo-random, it's fully random. And that's, like, that's, that's not good. I don't like that. Next, we have the Cycle of Truth. So, um, so the Cycle of, so the Cycle of Truth is actually one of the most, well, again, this is, is yet another kind of hated card. Um, but the, the reason why this one's hated is, is actually for a much, much more simpler reason. Um, typically speaking, when you get premier stat, or so, so every, every, like, card game or whatever, like, they usually tend to have, like, premier stat lines and whatnot. And typically speaking, for you to for you to get for you to get a premier stat line, you should have to have either a bad effect, um, have no effect, or uh, be one of those what the fuck barbecue sauce mistakes that, that that developers make. This card is one of those what the fuck barbecue sauce mistakes that that developers make. So this one's a three mana three three accelerate one restore one defense your leader. So the, the healer for one is like small. You're really, you're not really gonna care about that that much unless unless course, unless course is like the is unless course is like literally the difference between you winning and losing a game. But those but those as often as you might think. Um, and then the fan for restore one defense to your, restore one defense to your leader. So basically, if you play this card as a spell, it'll be fine. You can play this card as, as a creature, it'll be fine. There's no there's no real drawback to playing the card at all, uh, other than like opportunity cost of the whole oh, what's one of the cards you need in your 40 card deck. But the whole accelerate the whole ex the, the whole one man accelerate thing that's actually a very big deal just because like now we have more we have more um, we have more cards that have spell boost that have spell boost text and whatnot. This, this helps you charge things very very early on. For the for the apostle or, or for giant chimera or, or for or for truce adjudication, you know things like that. Uh, that's very big. Um, yeah, just, you know, good all around card. I 
But I'm not actually sure if it's, it's terrible seems like just because like Slowboost has Slowboost has a Slowboost got a nice a nice large boon of uh, different cards that they made this set. So it's like um it'll be a slight like restructuring again of uh, what you'll see played and what you won't play in front of them. Uh although oh although last week speaking, this card's also very very nice in arena, so I forgot about that. Arena stat line kills Next, we have, we have a strap and smelter reprint, so that's cool. Um, no, it, it's it's cool, but a little bit but a little bit weird looking because like we don't really have dirt synergies at, at the moment in rotation, so I don't really know what this got reprinted. But I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that uh, this means that the next set will be focused on dirt, so that's like something something we look forward to. Um, yeah. Next, we have Owen Knight of Mysteria. Owen is a fan pair. Randomly put a Mysterian card excluding Owen Knight of Mysteria from your deck to your hand. This card's nuts. This this card is straight up nuts. So the reason why this card is nuts is because one, it's it, sur it searches you the, uh, the things you want to get. Two, of all the Mysterian cards that we, that we have right now, there, there are currently two different one, two different Mysterian cards that have the whole affinity. Oh, uh, for each Mysterian card you play, Kasha uses this card. Oh, uh, that of Miss Miranda Light Mage, and then also and uh, and Mysterian Prodigy. Both of those cards will want will want to get searched by Owen. Yes, yes, Owen doesn't. Yes, Owen ha has 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 like you know. Um, the standard stat line for, for, for cards like this and whatnot, which does make him susceptible to GGs and things like that. But it's like fine. Like, like you're, you're, you're playing Spellbush Like, Spellbush Rune usually you plays like, things like say, Magic Missile anyway, right? So, yeah, you can like, still ping it off. So, that kind of like, makes it the, 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 the drawback kind of like a little bit cool, in, in my opinion. But yeah, the cards are very, very nice. Uh, definitely, definitely a three of. And, and now people will probably be thinking about playing Mr. Uh, Mr. What's his face? Mr. Bertrand. Servant of Truth, Servant of Truth, the 7 mana 3 5. Not bad. Okay, well, I'm not gonna open up that. Okay. Mr. Bertrand is a 7 mana 3 5. Accelerate 2, deal 2 damage to an enemy follower. And then Fanfare, deal 4, deal an enemy follower. This card is, um, it's actually, it's actually very good. Well, the issue is that I don't I don't know if it's good enough. Because, one, you don't often see, you don't often meet rune decks that actually, like, actually want to play creatures predominantly over spells. Which is, which is like a, which is a different thing that's like creating this card because even even though, even though his effect is actually very, very good, um, it's just it's just like the the startup cost it, like is like too high at the moment. So, um, but this card is, is still a very, very good very, very good arena card though. And then lastly, we have Astral Divination. Astral Divination is three mana. Randomly put two of the following cards into your hand: Venus. Pollux, Star Phoenix, Caster, Scorpius, or Andromeda. Perfect. So subtract one from the cost of those cards. So this card's actually very, very nice. I actually like this. I actually like this card a lot. Now, mind you, it's very, very randomness and whatnot. Um, but but it's, it's also an Earth Rune card, or Earth Rite card, or Earth Rune card. Um, which actually makes it like very, very cool. Because like Earth Rune is all is all about. Uh, sorry, Dirt Rune. Sorry, Dirt Rune is all about. Um, it's all about like value and things like that. So, uh, now I don't know how good this will be because I actually don't know. Uh, like, let's see. Off the top of my head, I, 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 I guess I guess the two that you probably care about the most by, by getting the caution addiction on is Star Phoenix and Pollux. So that means that you can like they, they can play Star Phoenix for two mana. So two mana Star Phoenix is actually is actually sexy, and then Pollux for four mana is actually not bad at all. It means that like it means that when you go to to, to play Pollux, in order to activate them, you just you just have to have it. You can you can activate them as early as turn six or as early as early as like turn four, depending on what happens. But most likely as early as turn six, uh, as po as opposed to seven. That's I don't know. Um, I don't really know what to think of this card, but obviously it, it, this does suggest that you know, oh, well, they're gonna be like meeting like Earth Room next set, or sorry, Dirt Room next set. So that's that, that means to be looking forward to. So yeah, this will conclude the quick part one of the my card review. Now, uh, I guess I guess I'll just go ahead and, and quickly just like look, quickly just like uh, talk, about, talk about I guess like which of these three factions that I, I think got like the most, that I think that, that I think like got the most. Honestly speaking, I'm pretty sure it's like Runecraft and Swordcraft. That are like the big winners from, from, from just like this part. Um, in particular, Rune definitely uh, gets gets the nudge. I think now Sword is like not bad. Like it, it, like it kind of like comes in, comes in second by, by, by like a slight margin. But Rune definitely got a lot of different cards that are all that are all very, very nice. But obviously, all of these cards are all pretty nice. It's just that Rune kind of gets the edge just because like there, there's more immediate synergies and you know, more more immediate oh uh, more immediate like payoffs and things like that. And that's like kind of nuts. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, I do appreciate all all the likes and subscribes and all the support. Um, of course, I'll go ahead and have the other videos out for you later today. Actually, but yeah.
Uh, they catch watching you.